I don't know if you remember, if you were around about three years ago now, I initiated a pilgrimage to Taizé in France. I had a dream ever since I was in college to visit Taizé to see what God was up to there and to join with thousands, hundreds of thousands of young people from all over Europe, all over the world really. So I had that dream since college and once I was here I kept trying to hope that that could happen and finally it looked like it was going to work out and I was going to be able to take a load of college students to Taizé to pray with me there as sort of a pilgrimage. But when we got it all sort of in place in some ways, I realized I couldn't go anymore because I had a wedding here. And because of that wedding, I wasn't going to be able to follow through <laughs> on that dream. So one of our interns then, Jackie Kading, who's still here, actually part of our community and in med school now at Washington University, she volunteered to lead the trip, and she did a smashing good job of it, really. And in her kindness, because she knew this meant a lot to me and it was a big letting go for me, she brought me back a souvenir. She brought me back a chalice made in Taizé in France. She had it mailed home because she couldn't bring it with her on the plane because she was afraid it might get broken. But when she opened the box, it actually was broken. It was in pieces, 20 pieces of ceramic. But being Jackie, <laughs> she figured it out. You got to go to her for doctors when, it's, when she's done. <laughs> she figured it out. She found a way to mend, to mend this beautiful chalice so that even after it was shattered into pieces, it was more beautiful than ever before. I don't know if you can see from there these lines where the cracks used to be, and still are actually. I don't know if you've ever heard of a process called kintsuji. Kintsuji. It's a ceramic restoration process developed in Japan 500 years ago, where broken ceramic pieces are taken and sealed together, but not in a way that hides the cracks. As a matter of fact, instead of hiding the cracks, they are boldly highlighted, highlighted and traced in gold. Molly, is Molly down here somewhere? Molly. I asked Molly, just because there's so many of us here, if Molly would just walk around a little bit and let you see it up close. Don't drop it. <laughs> don't drop it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> a little higher, Molly, so people, not so fast, yes, they won't be able to. <laughs> but I hope you can catch a glimpse. You see, instead of tossing these pieces in the trash, some craftsmen practice this art of kintsuji. Literally, it means gold joining, gold joining. It's a method of restoring a broken piece with a lacquer that is mixed with gold. Normally, anything that was broken and refurbished sells at a discount, but not kintsuji pottery. The ceramic piece actually turns out can you walk along the front line there? <laughs> it, actually, it actually turns out to be more beautiful and more valuable than before it broke. It's more beautiful, more valuable than before it broke. Thank you, Molly. The consuging method conveys a philosophy not of replacement, but of awe and of reverence for the broken places. The gold-filled cracks of a once beautiful item are testament to its history, that at one point something awful happened to it. They keep the cracks and actually highlight them so that we can see a testament to its own history in the very essence of the chalice. 
In the physical universe, broken things lose their value. They're thrown away. Flaws are fatal. But in the upside down kingdom of Jesus, the reverse is true. Broken things are precious. People reveal the beauty and power of God in their brokenness. Flaws become openings in this upside down world of Jesus. I guess you could entitle this homily, Molly Part Two. <laughs> if you were here last Sunday, you heard Molly tell of a wound that carries, carries that for many has proved fatal. For some, tragedy to say, fatal to their life, but more often than not, a fatal to their love because it destroyed their trust and there's no love without trust. But not for our little Molly. She had gone through a horrible experience of abuse as a child and she shared that last Sunday. And if you, haven't, if you weren't here and you get a chance to hear it, as you know, all of the homilies are online on our webpage. And if you go there, I highly, highly encourage you to listen to that story embedded in the homily. Molly had the audacity to believe that her wound could be a gift. Today, this homily is part two, and it begins with a shattered chalice. Unfortunately for all of us, there is a temptation to hide and be ashamed of our brokenness, to hide and be ashamed of the brokenness in our families, to hide and be ashamed of the brokenness in our church. We live in denial while projecting an image that only shows our best side. But our cracks don't make us worthless. In the upside down kingdom of God, our cracks far from make us worthless. They actually add to our value, authentically revealing our brokenness, that our brokenness can be a powerful way we bless others now. So the question we're left with is, do we let the cracks show Do we dare let the cracks show? Where are you broken? Where's your community broken? That flaw is our opening. Our brokenness is perhaps where we can best reveal the glory and power of a God of love of love itself. You know, I'm sure you've heard in movies sometimes or even in a novel, you hear one character say to another, can't we just go back to the way things used to be? It's usually a sign that that person is refusing to face up to the reality and to themselves and is offering up that way of thinking as a solution. Can't we just pretend that didn't happen? Some trauma has passed. People who are raised or hurt or mistaken want to be forgiven or healed or, or have somebody apologize to somebody. We want the bad times to just go away and give way to the good times. But only under the pretense, the false pretense that that bad thing never happened. Bad times can be repressed, but they can never be erased. Lasting change can only happen by embracing the trauma, embracing the bad times, finally facing up to that that is a true part of my story now, a part of my history, that at some point in time, something bad happened. We don't have to pretend that didn't happen anymore. Truth is, my friends, 
We can be remade. We can be repurposed. Peter, in the gospel story you just heard proclaimed, betrayed his Lord. He lied to protect himself. The Christ whom he denied when he needed him most could easily have discarded Peter, written off that failed relationship. But instead, this Christ, this Jesus, loved that very, very imperfect man. And in this gospel this morning, Christ is forgiving him. He's repurposing him. He's refashioning him. He's taking him and raising him up with love, with mercy. And I dare say, after this scene, Peter was better than ever before. Going on to lead that motley group of leaders in that first century church, and in the end, instead of denying and betraying out of fear, he was martyred almost exactly as Jesus was, only upside down. After that moment of healing love, gold on the cracks, he became a better man. And if you read back over that first text from Acts of the Apostles, you'll see it happening. Where this man who cowered in fear and lied about knowing Jesus, when he was told by the authorities, don't talk about him anymore. After that moment of love, he stood in front of the world and talked about him. And that's what happened for Molly when she embraced that wound. She had the audacity to believe that a wound could become a gift. It's golden joining, you know? It's golden joining. The cracks still show. And yet it's more beautiful than ever before. It's love and mercy that does this. It's a whole community that finds beauty in imperfection. Let me say it again. Finds beauty in imperfection. It's what our Holy Father Pope Francis is calling the church to, to see now. And that apostolic exhortation was just released 48 hours ago. That we can love the imperfect people. That the church, the Catholic Student Center, the Catholic Student Center came by a hospital for the hurting. And when something gets broken and fractured, it's not the end of things. It's not the end of people. It's an essential moment in their history. And the flaws in its shape are not hidden anymore, but emblazoned with golden significance. Thank you, God, for underlining that. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, my friends, is this, that this chalice exemplifies the truth. The truth that the pristine, perfect chalice Jackie bought is less beautiful than the broken. That our shape, who we are, is impossible to even see until we are fractured. Until, until a wound like a crack runs the length of our lives. Perhaps Hemingway said it best. And perhaps he had Kintsugi on his mind when he wrote it. <coughs> the world breaks everyone. And 
afterward, many are strong in the broken places. The world breaks everyone. And afterward, many are strong in the broken places. <laughs>